Hey right, guys, finally getting done with this one here. <sighs> so always, motor homes always take longer, plus the rain and stuff, but whatever, we're excited to get out of here, move on. We got one more to do in rainy weather up in Eureka, and then uh, we can head back south to where it's warm, sunny, and it doesn't ever rain. That's really what I want. No rain. Anyways, we got 1800 watts up here, two separate strings. So there's two 400s. Those are together in series. They go to 150, 70, and then we got uh, five 200s that are also all together in series. So one, two, three, four, five in series. Uh, and then I put in a combiner box here for the two strings. Plus, I'd give them the option to run some other stuff down if they want. And uh, I don't know, that's about it. I put soft starts in both the air conditioners. Uh, I had to turn that little antenna. You can see the little antennas up there. I had to tear that free and turn it just to get it out of the way of the panel. But I put these on rails, as you can see, which I typically do with the Gerard awnings, uh, just so they get up in the air a little bit. So then they're not way down behind uh, the rail, like Z brackets would be. Plus, it gives them an option to move them easily. That's the one benefit of that. It's just not enough of a benefit to go this route if z brackets is an option um so whatever i kind of leave it up to the customer it's just this route's much more expensive than just z brackets z brackets are like five dollars a panel i haven't really figured it out but i would bet this is somewhere around 80 to 100 dollars a panel per rail you know for the rail sections so anyways we'll head down below and see what's happening down there oh, it's nice to see blue sky again so here's the batteries. I didn't show you guys this at all in the last video. So this is just right on the other side of the Victron stuff. You can see it all, all through there. So, so we got four 300 amp hour Big Beard batteries. These are 12 volt batteries. Uh, I wired them in two groups of two. It somewhat depends. There's a lot of factors that go into whether I wire them individually. This one, I just there was no good way to lay out four cutoff switches and stuff, and this works just fine. So, so we got two. 600 amp hour cutoff switches up here so like these two go to that switch and the two on the other side go to that switch so those would be your main battery disconnects all these batteries do have power buttons um so you honestly almost could skip the battery disconnect but that fourth battery even the third one the power buttons are really hard to get to and it's nice to be able to easily bang bang on off so so I put in cutoff switches there. The 24 volts, they have the breaker on them. Well, those are easy to push. So as long as you can get to the battery, I don't put cutoff switches in for that one. So, all right, we'll go around the other side. Got some nice horses here at the neighbors. Got my own pony here. Got her all cleaned up from the mess the other day she found herself into. That was fun. I always like washing the whimey. Anyways, let's go around the other side here. They've gotten some rain the last couple days. So we had to pull the motor home up to get it out of the wet. But then we also need to get it out in the sun to make sure the solar is working before I I was done. Oh, where are we at here? Here we go. Anyways, it's a nice system. I think it turned out really nice. I think it looks pretty. Uh, certainly be a decent sized system. It used to be this was a huge system back in the beginning, but this is still a big system, but I've done some bigger ones now. But anyways, it's still nice. It's got dual 3000 VA inverters. Uh, so 4,800 watts continuous is really what they can do. But they can do 6,000 watts for short periods. They come to the auto former for load balancing, which you guys have seen me do quite often recently. It's honestly pretty rare for me to do a dual inverter setup and not put the auto former in for it. Uh, and we got two solar controllers up here for the two strings that are on the roof. Uh, and then we got the solar disconnect that I put between them. Uh, you might see some of the differences in some of my systems. There's systems that I quote and do the install all myself. And then there's a handful of systems like this one that Todd at Big Beard sells the equipment. And I just come and do the install. So, so that's why you might see a little bit of differences. I use the baby box and the midnight solar breakers and stuff. This is just what Todd has sent uh, for his systems. So... He didn't send the auto former. I added that. The battery protect I added. The DC to DC charger I added. The auto gen start I added. Um, the rest of the stuff they bought from Todd. And I just show up and install it. Which works pretty good. I moved a lot of this stuff. Um, this used to be right about here. I don't. I pretty much everything here. 
I moved except for this I didn't move that and I think I, I don't think I moved that but these I moved this I moved this I moved this was actually over here um, so I just got to make room for things uh, this breaker box here would be the AC input so this is our the neutron ground is split for the two inverters I just use this box because it's a cleaner way to go about it the breaker is kind of redundant but you can never have too much circuit protection can you well, battery protect I'm starting to do more and more of because it just prevents dead batteries um, I don't really have a problem with customers running batteries dead but when it happens if they run them so dead that the BMS is disconnect it can be a nightmare to wake them up where uh, cheap battery protect cheap being I don't know I forget what they are Less than $200, I believe, though, um, can save those problems, and it's worth the money. So, anyways, we'll run in and show you the screen real quick. Hey, buddy. They've been getting rained on for a couple days, too, so he's enjoying some grass. It's a nice rig. I think most of these motorhomes are. They're all pretty nice. Boom. We'll put the screen right there. I didn't center it because there's a stud right here, and honestly, like customer kind of liked it there better, and I like it better there too. Because you can still hang a picture and stuff here. I put that little tiny screen; it kind of bogs up this whole wall. So they just come down through here. I gotta I had to tear the cabinet apart and stuff to get through there. Solar wires; I had to tear this wall apart to deal with solar wires, and I really try to not have to tear into walls like that, but um, it just happened. That's why the tape's down there because I had to glue the corner trim back in. So anyways guys, that's it for this one. We're uh, headed a little farther north tonight and then we'll be headed back to Yuma and then obviously summer's coming here guys so you can certainly catch us in Michigan at our awesome boondocking spots we got there. You guys can always come and just hang out or you can come there and hang out and get a solar system installed or upgrades done. Just let me know. Uh, pick up the phone, give me a call, send me an email. I mentioned it before, I struggle to stay on top of all the emails, so if I missed it, send me another one or just pick up the phone and call me, 989-464-3314. I'd love to talk solar with any of you guys.